We've been getting some positive comments saying that you guys want more talking vlogs and a situation came up yesterday and we were talking around in the car and we were like, man, this would be so good to share with you guys and it's gonna take a little bit longer, so today's vlog is just a talking vlog. Uh, if you've watched our vlogs for any amount of time, I hope you stick around and you listen to at least some of this because this is like the secret sauce to our family and life. At least it's one of the hugest ingredients. And it is children, specifically discipline or training. I can't emphasize enough like how much this plays into our life and it probably results in what you see in our life today. Like us being able to enjoy our kids, us being able to do the types of things we do, Mm -hmm. us deciding to have more kids or being open to that idea. First, I need to say we're outside and we're not in down oh, jackets. Oh my gosh, it is so nice out here. It is very nice. What is going on here? And I think this impacts all of us, whether or not you have kids that are grown or younger or whether or not you even have kids at all. Um, these ideas have a deep impact on how we live life because I think they impact how we deal with kids and also how we see ourselves and God even. So we're going to be answering this question or talking about what do we believe about discipline and training specifically with kids, which is different from how to do it. Um, we're not going to get into a bunch of how to do it. And the reason is, is because what we believe, I think, informs all of what we do. You know, we could say, oh, well, you should spank or not spank or do a timeout for three minutes of this. And that will only apply to that situation. What we're going to share is the stuff that applies to all situations for us. Yesterday, the situation came up in our house where Felia was playing with Cammie's phone. Mm -hmm. And she was like upstairs, like kind of sneaking around. And we were late and trying to get out the door and I was trying to look for my phone and I was like, where, it was just here, where did it go? And I'm like, why the heck does Flea have it? And Cammie says, well, she takes it. And this I was like- happened before. I was like, I was like how many times has this happened? Cammie says like, well, it's happened five times. At least. And I was like, well, and it, why didn't you do anything about it? And what he means by doing something about it, because in my mind, I, well, I, I said, don't do it again. But then I kept saying the same thing over and over. So we have a rule that we don't want our younger kids just taking our phones wherever they want. So I guess that's, you know, some people are okay with that. We're not. Uh, for the child and for the phone. And in this case, the child broke the rule. So the question happens, what do you do when a child breaks a rule? What we believe is that the job of parents is to create pain for the child when they break a rule so that in the future they don't run into more pain. To a lot of people, that's a, I, I think that's a foreign idea that you, that would be a good thing to cause your kid pain, but there are things that we have learned as adults that we only learn from pain. And in fact, part of this you have to get into like what is pain and is pain good or bad? We don't believe that pain is bad. If you have studied at all like leprosy or it's called Hansen's disease, that actually was like a, been a real fascination of mine. But those people, they can't feel pain and their lives are ruined because they don't know when something is hurting them or not. And what pain is, pain is an indicator that something is wrong. So if you put your hand on the stove and it hurts, you know that keeping your hand on the stove will actually burn off your hand. The pain is actually a gift. It's a good thing. Certain things will really hurt our children and do long-term damage. This could be physical, like the most obvious example is like an electrical outlet or the road. You know, if a kid is gonna cross into the road, I would hurt them short-term, like knock them down or push them to the ground so that they don't get hit by a car. Oftentimes it's a little bit more abstract than that. In this case with a phone, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Well, the phone breaks and it's 400 bucks, but actually that's not the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing that can happen is that Philea learns that disobedience and rebellion and believing that she is more right than her mother is okay. We believe that that's the worst thing that can happen. So in a way, by Cammie not dealing with this four times in a row, 
she was training Cammy, saying, hey, it's okay to disobey me, your mom. We think that's a really dangerous place for a kid to be. Some people think that disobedience is not a big deal. We think it's as dangerous as crossing the road, long term for a child's health, or even as adults, we believe disobedience of God and his ways is the biggest deal that can happen. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. Even though I believe that disobedience is one of the most harmful things for my children, it's still hard for me to keep that in the forefront of my mind when I need to discipline my six-year-old, for example. And I think it's because Disobedience is such an internal thing. It's not as overt as, oh, they're gonna get hurt because they just ran out into the road. It's kind of cute in a one-year-old, and it's really, really not cute in a 15-year-old or an adult, for that matter. When my kids were young, it was easy for me to, to just kind of push it off and say like, you know what, it's not that big a deal. But you have to have this longevity outlook. Okay, I need to like fast forward 5, 10, 20 years from now. What is this going to look like in my kid's life? And in this way, uh, parenting and discipline and training becomes very proactive instead of just reactive. Mm -hmm. Kids, they violate my convenience level or they actually break something or hurt something and that's when I usually respond just to put out the fire. That's the easiest time to respond. Mm -hmm. But actually, discipline and parenting, uh, it's better we think if it happens much, bef much earlier than that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the entire way we see the child and we start off with the vision of what do we want this child to be? And a lot of things we don't have control over. We think that you can train children to be obedient and you can train them actually to be disobedient. You can train them to respect authority or at least to fear or understand authority. You can train them to completely disregard and have no idea what authority is. I have struggled with only trying to make my kids obedient so that they would be easy for me so that they would have good behavior and that they would look good to other people. I want my kids to have good fruit, which I think part of that means later on in their life that they respect authority and that they can see that certain actions produce certain consequences and they stay away from it. I think some people are gonna say, why pain? You guys are masochists. Just do positive reinforcement. If you are only doing positive reinforcement, I think you are taking out the single largest tool in our toolbox towards training. And the easiest way to look at it is to look at our own life. The way that I have changed the most in my life is when things were painful. When I broke up with my only girlfriend, I was like, you know what, I don't wanna do that again. When I'm in the gym and I'm literally tearing muscle fiber, that's what working out is doing, so that they grow back and become stronger. When we're running, when we're apologizing and facing conflict from our past and learning that we hurt people so that we won't do it again, pain creates change and it really is a gift. It's not comfortable though. It is our job as parents to care more about our children's long-term well-being than just their immediate comfort. This isn't always, by the way, like have to be a spanking or some violent pain. It could be a timeout for three minutes, that's pain, you know? It could be taking away the Nintendo for a week. That could be very painful to kids. Mm -hmm. but, but something that actually hurts them, it says, whoa, I don't wanna do that anymore. That's what this is all about, so that they will avoid something that they can't see further down. When we're running with our kids or when we start doing long hikes, like 95 miles, our kids, like our younger kids, our two, three, four year olds, they don't care about 95 miles. They don't care about finishing the Wonderland Trail, whatever the heck that is, <laughs> or like hiking around a mountain. That, that does not give them any sense of accomplishment. That's adult type satisfaction. They care about a gummy bear in two minutes. That's what they care about. And touching the water, picking up the rock. So we have to set little tiny things that help them accomplish the big thing. If you care about your kids, you have to discipline them in some way, shape, or form. Um, I don't think there's a way around that. And I know that's not a sexy thing to say in our culture. We're much more bent on the positive reinforcement side, which I also think is great, but that's only half the picture. I think God disciplines us. I think we have the privilege 
to discipline our children and sometimes we're gonna screw up at it. This is not for our satisfaction. And also this is not about justice. You know, I think a lot of people think discipline, it's like, oh, you did this, so you get this. And it's like, you just bring down the wood. And it's like, no, we're not even saying that. We're saying, if you see your child is heading towards a burning building, you will stop them. And burning buildings come in a lot of different packages. I hope that this is helpful for some of you. There's a whole nother conversation about how, and that varies based upon the personality of the kid, the age of the kid, probably the area that you live in, mm -hmm. and what your specific goals are. Well, and how the parents were raised, and there's a lot there too. And we've just learned that we each bring something to the table that's unique, a different vantage point, and a different kind of bent, mm -hmm. and it, our kids need both of those things. So we need to agree, and it's better to like come to some sort of alignment or agreement for us mm -hmm. um, than to me do my style and Cammy does her style mm -hmm. and give up and just me be always frustrated at her and she's always frustrated at me. We're gonna keep on enjoying the weather. It is Friday night, which is Shabbat. We're gonna begin resting. Thanks for another week, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, see you next week. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. shalom.